What's that? What is that? The Marvel Cinematic Universe is all sorts of messed up these days. Endgame was awesome and a fitting climax to Phase 3 and the Infinity War saga, but it also threw the entire thing out of whack. Whack! Now you've got multiverses and time travel loopholes and formerly deceased characters are roaming around in the present day. It's all completely bonkers. With Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 coming up in the not so distant future, Marvel Studios might just use that movie to bring back all sorts of interesting characters. Ones that you might not even see coming. Or maybe you will, uh, I don't know you. Phase 4 of the MCU is just getting underway, and it's already posed to be the craziest story arc yet. Thanos has been defeated and the Infinity Stones are now put back where they belong, we assume, so it's time to move forward with new stories, new characters, and new stories for old characters. Perhaps Marvel's greatest triumph is the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. Don't get me wrong, it's by no means their most successful franchise, but it also was never meant to be. While everyone safely assumed that the likes of Spider-Man and Captain America and even the Avengers would dominate at the box office, the Guardians was Marvel's curveball. The squad didn't have much of a comic book following, nor were they particularly popular or highly anticipated. However, the first two movies were massively successful. See what happens when you stop worrying and just make good movies? With Guardians 3 just around the corner, it seems likely that Marvel will use it as a vessel to reintroduce a number of key characters, as well as a bevy of new ones. For example, there's Thor. Yep, the God of Thunder was once considered a marquee franchise player. Along with Iron Man and Captain America, he's pretty much one of the main pillars that the MCU was built on. However, he's gone through a bit of a transformation recently. No, I'm not talking about the beer belly. I mean, he went from being an underwhelming and somewhat boring main character to a fantastic and hilarious role player. At the end of Avengers Endgame, we saw Thor tag along with the Guardians of the Galaxy, which implies that he'll be part of the squad from here on out. He even jokes that they're now the Asgardians of the Galaxy as he and Star-Lord engage in a verbal tug of war over who the leader of the team really is. It's still unknown if Thor will be a full-fledged member of the Guardians or if he's just catching a ride with them into outer space and will venture off on his own. Not only is there going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, but there's strong rumors of a Thor 4 in the works. It'll be interesting to see how these two correlate and how they play alongside one another. Then again, wherever there's Thor, there's Loki. But wait, you're probably wondering how that's possible, considering Loki definitely got Wicked destroyed by Thanos at the beginning of Infinity War. Yes, yes he did. He got taken out in a way that there's no coming back from. Unless you use time travel. During Endgame, when the team attempted to pull off the time heist, a 2012 version of Loki managed to escape with the Tesseract. So, the version of Loki that kinda learned the error of his ways and started turning a new leaf towards a life of positivity and justice is definitely no more, but the devious and nefarious Loki that tried to enslave the world several years ago is absolutely fine. That's good news. There's a good chance that this rogue Loki will factor into either the new Guardians movie or the new Thor movie. Or they might just save it for the small screen and completely remove Loki from the MCU and place him over on Disney+. Plus. But I'm willing to bet that there's going to be at least an easter egg in the new Guardians movie that gives us a glimmer of that lovable Loki mischief. Perhaps the biggest comeback story of the next installment will be Gamora. This one is a doozy, so let's unpack it a little bit. Gamora was a key member of the Guardians of the Galaxy and also Peter Quill's girlfriend. Then, she got dead when her dad tossed her off a cliff in order to get some jewelry. What's important is that she's back now. But much like Loki, it's a past version that's back. Thanks to the wonders of time travel, there's a 2014 version of Gamora roaming the universe, a version of the character that's probably a lot more lethal and sadistic. After all, getting all lovey-dovey with the Star-Lord and joining the good guys softened the one-time ruthless assassin. It'll also be a fantastic opportunity to kind of pull a reset on the character. Nothing against Zoe Saldana, who actually does a great job with the role, but the way that it's been written is just a little uncomfortable. Here's this awesomely skilled combat machine, and they kind of turn her into a silly girlfriend to enhance Peter Quill's story. They also essentially just use her as a prop in the Infinity War saga to be a means to an end for Thanos. 
On a number of occasions, Marvel's been guilty of utilizing their female roles simply for the benefit of their male roles, without building strong, standalone female characters with compelling stories of their own. Goodbye. Gamora is a prime example of this, so rewinding the clock and essentially getting a mulligan on the past five or six years could be a great opportunity for the franchise to rebuild the role properly. While Thor, Loki, and Gamora are some characters that they might reintroduce in the new Guardians movie, there's also a slew of new characters they might bring into play. One near guarantee is Adam Warlock. In the post credit scenes of the previous Guardians of the Galaxy movie, we saw this golden god being created. While we don't actually get a glimpse of this reportedly perfect individual, we do see a tomb type of vessel that he's being created in. He's apparently the ultimate living being, created with the intention of taking down the Guardians of the Galaxy. Adam. So it's safe to expect him as a major antagonist of the next film. But who could Marvel get to possibly play such an idealistic life force? Surely they would need to use CGI to create such an unfathomably perfect individual. Unless, there's been rumors circulating online that the role will be filled by Zac Efron. Yeah, that checks out. While it's mostly rumors, I don't see anybody else on the planet measuring up to Efron levels of godliness, you know? So there's a high chance that Adam Warlock is involved in the next plot, and there's a high probability that the Eternals will make an appearance as well. This one might be in more of a cameo or an easter egg capacity, but I would be surprised if they didn't at least mention it in the next Guardians movie. The Eternals have their own movie on the docket, and it's not like Marvel's just gonna release a film based on new characters without at least teasing it beforehand. That's their whole M.O. The Guardians of the Galaxy would be the perfect opportunity to make said introduction, seeing as how they're the two most intergalactic franchises in the entire studio. <laughs> space people meet space gods, it just makes sense. They're not gonna just drop the Eternals in a Black Widow flashback movie. They also have a movie coming out focused on Nova, or Richard Rider. The Nova Corps are an intergalactic police force comprised of many different species from many different worlds. They've already played a pretty substantial role in the Guardians of the Galaxy, with Glenn Close portraying Nova Prime. It's only a matter of time until the Nova power arrives on the scene. Since we already know that a Nova movie is in the works, Marvel might very well use the next Guardians movie to introduce the characters, similarly to the Eternals. There's a few more characters that are rumored to make an appearance as well. While I'd wager heavily on Adam Warlock and the Eternals, there are others that I'd wager lightly on. Director James Gunn has already stated that he'd like to go in on more of the backstory and personal lives of two middle-tier characters, Rocket Raccoon and Drax the Destroyer. If they're diving deep on Rocket Raccoon, then they're definitely going to introduce Lila. She's an adorable talking otter who believes that Rocket is her soulmate. What's up, little otter? <laughs> you think Disney's gonna pass up on the opportunity to introduce an adorable, wisecracking, sentient otter to the mix? Ha! <laughs> think again, dummy. Two adorable talking animals in a superhero movie? That sounds like a merchandising gold mine. Some physical strength the otters brought together to kill the caiman. If Lila's involved, and they're gonna go into Rocket's backstory, then you could bet they're gonna introduce the High Evolutionary. He's this supremely intelligent being who created both Rocket and Lila. He's brilliant, but he's not exactly the best guy. He likes to experiment on people and do all sorts of funky, inhumane stuff. So expect a real sicko. Yeah, sicko mode. And if we're going in on the Drax character, I have famously huge turns. Then we'll probably be introduced to Moon Dragon, Drax's daughter. I know what you're probably thinking. Didn't Drax's entire family perish at the hands of Thanos? I'll kindly ask you to refer to the Loki part from earlier. Nothing matters anymore, and anyone could be brought back using time travel, magic, multiple realities, or any sort of difficult to explain combination of the sort. So Moondragon is Drax's daughter, but it's not a nice relationship. In the comics, she acts as a villain who was trained by Mentor, who's actually Thanos' father. She's extremely intelligent and extremely dangerous, and poses a massive threat to the Guardians of the Galaxy. There's also a part in the comics where she seduces Thor and ends up turning on him. Now that Thor is part of the crew, this could actually happen. On the plus side, Moondragon is an openly bisexual character, which could help pave the way for an LGBTQ storyline. When asked to comment, Dave Bautista, the actor that plays Drax, said, quote, I would love to tell more of the backstory of Drax. Whether or not that will happen, I don't know. I think it's a really interesting story. 
Up until this point, Drax's entire story has revolved around the loss of his family and needing to get revenge for them. Introducing his daughter, fully alive, as a bad guy, would make for an interesting plot. Who do you think they'll bring back in the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie? And which new characters do you predict they introduce? Let us know by dropping a comment in the section down below. Who knows, we may even use your comment in an upcoming video. Before you go, make sure to hit that thumbs up button to let us know that you're watching, and subscribe to Behind the Screen to stay up to date on all our latest releases. Until next time, bye!